I'm joined here by the current India number one, Arjun Erigaisi. Arjun, I'm in London right now. Sorry, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm in Canada right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm dazed right now. It's early in the morning. Uh, where are you? Uh, I'm currently in Paris. I'm heading home. You are heading I home after a very, very successful European trip. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have been in Europe for quite some time. Yeah, I think it's been close to a month. Although I didn't play too many tournaments. Well, you played a lot. I was just uh, checking like before this interview and in general, I was following you. Um, in the last few uh, couple of months, you played Bundesliga West, um, which maybe is the second league, right, of Bu Bundesliga. Yeah, it's the second. Second league. We, then, sorry. We won this league, so next year we'll be in the first. Division. Which team are you playing for in Bundesliga? The W R team. Ah, the Dusseldorf. Uh, yeah, the Dusseldorf team. And so next year your team will go into the first league. It will be very interesting. Uh, then you played the Israeli National League. Uh, after that, you went and played the Shenzhen Masters, which was on the other side of the globe. Then you again played two Bundesliga games. Then you um, went and played the Grenke Chess. And then you played Menorca. And, uh, you, are, and you are saying you haven't played much. <laughs> I mean, in this trip. Uh, ah, so yes. I left home. Yeah. The Israeli League and Shenzhen, that was like in the previous trip. And in this trip, I played only two tournaments and two Bundesliga games. It's amazing what you managed to achieve in this last couple of months. You've reached a live rating of 2761. Uh, you've become, I th you're in the published rating already, your 1st of April, you are the India number one. And from that, you managed to gain rating. And Arjun, there's a lot to talk about, but one of the things which I am a huge huge fan of is how did you decide to play in these open tournaments with such a high rating um, yeah so menorca i had confirmed like when my rating was not i was like 27 38 and i didn't want to change plans and i knew menorca was going to be a lot of fun i would meet a lot of friends after a very long time and also i must mention uh Gukesh was one of my inspirations to play Menorca because last year with about 2700, I thought it's very risky and I chose not to play. But he played with 2730 and he gained some rating and he won the tournament as well. <laughs> so I thought I should also be more courageous. You you and... actually bettered his, means he was 2730, you are now 2750 plus you played. Maybe, maybe he will get inspired to play at some point with a slightly higher rating but yes amazing how you kind of inspire each other and yeah that was the reason for the Menorca and Grenke it was not in the plan uh, but at some point I realized I was in Europe anyway and I thought it doesn't make too much sense to just come back and go again so if I'm staying in Europe yes, why not add another tournament and another tournament yeah, this feeling of, you know, like you are there somewhere and making these sort of plans um, on the spur of the moment is really very unique uh, at, at this level. This is what I have I've been following the world of chess and sort of everyone, once they cross a certain rating barrier, they want everything well planned. They want invitations. Maybe they make a schedule for their year. But you are more sort of free rolling. Is this out of choice? Is this how you are? Or is it because you are, uh, you know, looking for invitations, but they are not coming your way and you are saying, I need to keep playing. What is your mindset like? Yeah, I would definitely love to play the closed tournaments much more than the opens. But as of now, I'm not getting too many of them. So, but I don't have too much of a problem to play in the opens. Well. So if they are not coming, then I would say that. Is, do you think that these open tournaments are dangerous for a player like you with such a rating or how, how do you approach it? Because 
in no, none of the events you have lost rating points be it Krenke, be it Menorca, be it any of the leagues that too in the second division you've always kept gaining rating points. Um, yeah, there's a certain amount of risk but if I just play at my level uh, I think it's likelier that I would gain than lose because most of the opponents are kind of weaker than me. Mm -hmm. So I should I should gain. You know, I've been talking to a few top players and they say that um, a repertoire that is works in a super tournament is different from a repertoire that works in an open event. So, while the strength does exist, do you think that this switch is needed? Yeah, I think so. You you cannot be that solid with black especially in the open tournaments. Uh, it's very important to avoid this early loss. Uh, getting running into some theoretical doors and all this. So yeah, it's important to get a game against the loss. But in general your style is like that. Even if you go to a super tournament you like to play aggressive chess. Yeah, that is kind of true. So. <laughs> when you when you got to know that uh, you become the India number one um on the live rating, uh, how did it feel? And then when it got published on first of April, you became only the third player in India, like uh, not third, actually it's second player after Gukesh to overtake Vishy Anand in published ratings ever. So how was that feeling? Yeah, so when it happened in the live ratings, I was in China and yeah, yeah then I was just not thinking, of, uh, I was still upset that I didn't make it to the candidate. So I decided not to care about the ratings and anything, just play tournaments because I like playing, so I and also I was in China, so I did not have WhatsApp and anything, so I had no updates for sure. And I wasn't like too aware of it. I I knew that happened, but that was pretty much it. Uh, and yeah, on April one, I got a lot of messages from many people, and yeah, then I it felt good. Yeah, you, you spoke about that you were kind of switched off, but also that you were feeling a little bad that you didn't make it to the candidates. Uh, does that play a role right now in you that it fires you up, that you want to sort of keep playing, keep doing better? Uh, no, actually, I took a different approach. After uh, knowing that I didn't make it, I decided I'll, uh, I'll just do whatever I feel like. And I feel like playing, so... I'm playing, mm. but it's not like it's firing me up to play more. But it's something which you really wanted to make it. I think you were close from the FIDE circuit perspective and so on. And then when that did not happen, it was a uh, sort of a, not a very happy thing. Yeah, like you, you felt uh, low for some time. Yeah, that was very painful and the first few weeks of January was not easy at all and yeah slowly with time I managed to move on. Brilliant that's uh, amazing uh, is, is there are there anyone uh, around you in and around in your circle who are on this journey with you you know not just chess wise but also psychologically? Uh, yeah definitely my parents and my, my sister my entire family and my friends, uh, yeah, amongst the chess circle, Ritvik, Sankal, Nihal, and, uh, and also Shrika, uh, and the whole Quantbox team. I think that everyone has been very supportive. Mm. So in general, you have a very nice sort of balance of a chess uh, side of your friends. But also, I think you from time to time like to sort of switch off yes from chess and be in this zone with your family with your fr friends away from chess is that is that how you like yeah nowadays especially i i would like to be not totally into chess and mm -hmm. have some other things mm -hmm. that's wonderful that's wonderful to know arjun uh, from all the events that you played and you've done so well which one stands out for you was it shenzhen was it Grenke? Was it Menorca? Uh, were, were the leagues good? Which one uh, did you enjoy the most? Uh, I enjoyed Menorca the most because 
Uh, yeah, like I said, I met a lot of friends that I didn't meet in a while. So we were just hanging out and yeah, I had a good time. You do you like uh, go when you go to Menor? I know it's a beautiful town, right? It's on the beach and so on. And when you play such a tournament, uh, you also would have to prepare, yes? Or is that not a part too much of? Because there are, I think, are there double rounds in Menorca? Or... There were a few double rounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to prepare, but it, it was manageable. Mm. So you also find time to spend with your friends, also prepare and then play and so on. This is something which I, even at my level, you know, which is way below what you are, struggled with. When I went to tournaments, I would really, there used to be like this beautiful beach uh, places I've been there and um, I would lo- want to go and experience that. But then I would think, oh my God, I have to prepare. I cannot go because then I would be wasting time and so on. So what is your advice to someone like me uh, there? <laughs> Uh, okay, don't prepare too much because like there is a double zone so anyway like there's not too much time to prepare and at night just uh, relax and chill mm-hmm. also it's very important to work when at home yes during, not yeah. just during the, so you have you have your preparation and everything which you are working on around the clock all the time yeah yeah mm-hmm. And and uh, how how are things going on? Last time, I think when we spoke, you had mentioned that you are working with Rustam Kazimjano. Is that still going on? Are there any other trainers that you are working with which you would like to reveal? Um, yeah, as of now, I can mention only Rustam. And yeah, we had some. Then we have been having some training going with him. And, with Rustam. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why um, my trip was very long. Ah, okay. You basically also went and spent time with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's wonderful. Uh, you know, just one question, uh, because we have been talking about Rustam since maybe Tata Steel, was it? Uh, I think when you won that and you had said, I will reveal it, it was 2022, was it? 22, yeah. 22. Um, no, actually, it was 21. 21, time. yes, exactly. So it's been roughly three years now. What is it about Rustam that you like as a trainer? And I, I have heard from so many people that he has such great depth in chess, uh, that he has a different way of looking at chess. Do you also feel that? Yeah, he has some very good concepts, and I think it's not uh, usual. And also, his. Uh, like the chess psychology is very good. So yeah, that, those two things I think. Mm. It's completely unbelievable that uh, Rustam, who is also working with Nodir Beck, because he mentioned that in Prague Masters, he he, he mentioned two trainers, Jakob Agard and Rustam. And now he stopped working with Jakob, but the work with Rustam continues. He reached world number f- four. And at some point you reached world number five. Okay, now you are at six, seven, It's because there's a very small gap. But it's unbelievable that uh, two of the top players are working with the same trainer. Yeah. I think at some point, Fabi and Danish also have yes. at the same team. With Chuchelo. Mm, Chuchelo. And that's, uh, that is well known in the chess world. Uh, so it's amazing. Yes. And Arjun... Uh, should we look at one game of yours from Menorca, uh, which is your favorite? Which one would you choose? Uh, my favorite would be against Aryan Chopra. Okay. Okay. So, uh, somehow, you know, I I had the database open and I chose that game. I thought Arjun would choose Aryan Chopra game. So, let's have a look at uh, this game. You are, because it's the penultimate round. And I think you played really well uh, because you beat one of your friends. Must not have been easy yeah, to play against Ritwik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was a very unpleasant feeling. Mm. But, uh, okay, in the end it went well for him. But I was also sad that it, it kind of ruined his tournament. Yeah, I know. I know this feeling. Yeah, like I've been to tournaments with Amruta and we get paired with each other. And then 
we have this sort of policy that we will always play never draw and then most of the times i have won uh, and then you feel okay that you won but then their tournament goes not so well yeah, and it's yeah. not a good feeling yeah uh, but it's part of the game yeah so then you beat uh, after that another indian player um, after ritwik this was ritwik we played in round number 6 then you beat pranav anand uh, which was also interesting and then aryan chopra and this game uh, was very interesting for me because uh, the opening which was chosen the semi tarash is supposed to be uh, you know this let me just show it on the board and maybe speak with you on it so e6 knight f3 d5 knight c3 c5 takes takes e4 takes takes and this is very well known position uh, overall in opening theory and i have always struggled when you know you get this i castle bring my rooks to the center and then it's not so easy for me to know what are the the plans but what you showed in this game is very very nice uh, can you tell us a bit about the opening of this game did you prepare it how was it um, yes okay uh, he had not many games in this direction actually this direction there were zero games but i i remember my play them like long time ago and yeah in this direction black generally gets a very solid position with the knight going to d7 f6 and pawn b6 bishop b7 Yes. And, yes, and rook c1, bishop b7, d4. Actually, you know, uh, there's this very famous game of. Uh, sorry. Bragwins. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, in recent times there are many, but there is one famous game of uh, Tal. I think he was black. He was beaten by someone. I forget the name. Uh, and in that, after b6, and it was written in many books. that you must put your rook here and the other rook here and not put it on the c file because then it might get traded and you want to play in the center so how is it different now from from this what was said maybe 60 50 60 years ago yeah this uh this this is still i think the main line but uh there's a there's a lot of heavy theory here and instead of the d1 the white has many setups here. in fact in step bishop c4 itself there are many option many setups but this rook c1 i think black also tried once against vincent yes rook c1 bishop b7 d5 it's a very direct approach to take right like generally you play around you put your rooks then you play h4 sometimes queen f4 you are waiting when to push but here you go directly yeah here you just go directly and If it turns out to be a pass point, you're doing well. If it turns out to be a weakness, then no, it's not good. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, it is much like it's very concrete. Yes, from here. Uh, not exactly. Black still has a lot of options, mm. but it's it's not easy for black to actually target the d5 pawn. Okay. So rook f e1. Queen f six, queen e three, rook a d eight was played, and now rook c d one. Yeah, and here I felt e d is a bit premature. I was expecting queen e seven. Hmm. Um, because with e d e d he just gave me the e five square e five. Right. And. So I have a great position. So that with the queen is under the threat of e d then. Hmm. I still hadn't made up my mind what to play, but I realized there are many options: queen a three, queen f four, maybe d four. Right. So here uh, e d was a little bit premature. You get this, but what Aryan thought is that he can uh, block with rook d six here. and maybe bring the other rook and make d5 into a weakness um yeah but one thing he needs to be careful of is like whenever he moves the f8 rook f7 can become really soft hmm. and i have this idea with rook d4 rook f4 and i did not do it right away but i did it on the next one you first played h3 
yeah it's just a the flap tip right also just just in case if he does this then <laughs> okay just a joke but uh, he he was i mean that is one of the reasons why he had to make his next move which was at 6 and he then goes to d8 and now i'm in time with rook d4 so if he goes to rook d8 i have rook f4 he will have to go queen b2 and there's a lot of pressure on f7 mm but now the d5 pawn is weak right uh, how do you continue do you go queen e7 or yeah there uh, there's a lot of options i wasn't sure one of the lines was like queen e7 yeah rook 6 d7 and d6 wow but i'm not sure because king h7 and i i couldn't find anything man arjun I, I, this i need to talk to you about like your games are filled with such unbelievable complications you know i was in prague masters um, commentating and you were playing in shenzhen and i was looking at the games one of them with anish unbelievable like such variations just keep hap- happening all the time like uh, is is it something that is with your opening choice is it the, your style of play how is it that you get such games I mean, actually, I have no idea either. Uh, at some point, I used to be like long ago. I used to be completely positional, but then I expanded my style and and yeah, then I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good to not know because then you there's no way for even others to kind of find out how you bring this because you yourself don't know. uh but this is unbelievable always something or the other keeps happening a3 you played um maybe to make a square for your bishop yeah yeah just a plus left no he was prepare, preparing some b5 so i was preparing against it just some bishop here too right so he went queen d8 now you played bishop a2 and bishop d5 is not possible because of queen d2 uh-huh. and he loses material so he went queen c7 you went queen e5 bishop c8 queen g3 what's what is the main aim here because you are not getting through uh, your d pawn do you want to switch to a king side attack somehow yeah i want to switch to king side attack and i want to maneuver my knight mm. maybe something so, like this yeah that is an idea but whenever i go on d5 he has the key Ah, so me. ideally, I wanted like a uh, knight to the d4 square, so that it can go to c6. But here it's kind of concrete because he goes queen d8 and threatens to g6. Ah. So to... and if he gets to g6, then my queen gets a bit awkward and I shouldn't allow that. Hmm. So now I have to go knight e5. Okay. And if the key eight, I thought I'll go the key three. It's still a complex position, but I think you are making progress. Yeah, black is under the lot of pressure. Hmm. So he went queen g five, and this suddenly you traded queens. Uh, this was very interesting uh, decision that you made because uh, queen trade leads it to a more now static position. There is no more attack. Uh, how did you decide this? Uh, no, when I play, when I went for the queen g three plan itself, I I knew that the queen trade was going to happen, but uh, I thought I'll get my knight to c four, so his rook will have to go to the side, and my rook will invade to the seventh rank, and then if I get like d six and knight e five, it can be they did in this. So here, rook e seven, d six, knight e five, and before you know it, all the pieces are attacking f seven point. Yeah, and also there is a d seven threat. Ah, uh, there is what? No, d seven. D seven is also a threat. True. Okay, so you played rook e seven, d eight, knight e five, king f eight. Hmm. Yeah, and here I really wanted to play d six. It was a very critical moment. Oh, but aren't you losing material here? Ah, uh, maybe full concrete calculations. Ah, uh, take here. If it takes this, I take on f seven first with the rook. Okay. And if rook f seven, I take rook d six. 
now f7 is hanging b6 is hanging right so instead of rook f7 if king e8 i trade on d6 and just take g7 and this is just winning because i'm a pawn up plus i have activity and everything so after d6 uh he should go bishop e6 yeah bishop takes mm-hmm. And knight takes is very logical, but it just fails to knight d seven. Ah, and you lose material. Yeah, yeah. now take take knight d four. Look, dear, is a mess. Wow, <laughs> nice variation. So he has to go king c eight maybe, but then you now I just take. Check. Wow, beautiful. But instead of knight d six, there is rook e six. It looks like the, yeah, f seven is going, but look, f seven king g eight. And both e five and d six are under attack. If I go to f five, he will take the d six. This rook. Uh, yeah, I think doesn't matter that much. And take I can take g five, but he will go knight e four. And he has already I'm a pawn up temporarily. He definitely has has a lot of play. If in fact you might be in trouble if you lose this pawn on a three. Yeah, and also now the d the rook is under attack. If I go like the g four, there's the d one and knight f two. So instead of the g4, if I go to f5, he he can pin my the with the d5. Maybe check first and then the d5. Wow, wow! What amazing calculations, Arjun! Because it's not a simple position, and so here maybe this was the moment, the toughest moment in the game for you, right? Because d6 looks so natural, and mm-hmm. there are ways for so him to go wrong. To Sorry. Exactly the traps and everything after d6. And I so badly wanted to play, but uh, against this line, I just couldn't get a better push. Beautiful. So, this this moment, I feel, really exemplifies your strength uh, as a player because let's say there are ten lines, nine are working, one is not working, so you have to go to something else, and that move is not so simple. What you made here, which is rook c seven, uh, amazing. Yeah, with this move, I I'm just keeping all the pressure that I have, and yeah, here, uh, he already had like five minutes or six minutes, so he was under pressure on the clock as well. Hmm. And because yeah, was this move, move, rook c seven, he must also be expecting d six, and he must have these concrete lines. He would he would also be calculating bishop e six and stuff. And then when you play yeah. rook c seven, suddenly it's like okay, I didn't expect that move here. Yeah. And I think at this point he kind of collapsed. Um, Bishop d seven was, I think, just a bad move. Mm. I, I was expecting the f five. Yeah. And knight c four then look back to f six. And I don't really want to take on b six and take yeah. on c five because then the d pawn is not so strong and bishop on a two is not so strong either. But pawn up is not good enough. Like rook d, you think he will block it like this? Yeah, he and his king is also very close, so it is better. But I think not as big as mm. I was expecting. So you thought this was the best defense, but he went bishop d seven. Yeah. You pushed. Okay, fine. Take, take. And yeah, this move is very important. Yeah, maybe we will ask our viewers to pause the video here and think like Arjun. What is the move that Arjun came up with here? Um, what you you need to remove the knight somehow from d seven, basically, if you want to yeah, make yeah. progress. Yes. And uh, that's why you made this amazing move, rook e four, with the idea of rook e seven. Yeah. And. Um... Yeah, here there was a many interesting things. So my threat is simple. I go to e seven and attack d seven. Yes. And if the knight moves, uh, f seven hangs, so he will have to go knight e five. But then I go g four. So let's say he may may say more like g six here, for example. So e seven, knight e five, g four. If the rook moves, knight hangs, so knight check, and I go king h one f one or h yeah, one. Yeah, not rather h four. And then the rook moves, and I just take on f seven. Right. So this is the threat. So to deal with this, I I thought knight e five directly was 
uh, one possibility instead of g6. Knight e5. Yeah. But now don't you have g4 again or? Yeah, g4. Because if I don't go g4, then he'll get he'll get f6. Yes. And I thought that might be some solidity. So g4, knight f3 check. And I thought I have to go to h1. Okay. Because there's knight d2 check now if you go to f1. Yeah, and king g2, knight h4, I don't I think knight is more vulnerable on d. Right. Look f6, it has to protect f1. And here I found a very good move. Rook C E seven. Rook C E seven. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you know this 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 move is so insane because he can't take here. It's a back rank mate. He can't take here. F seven is hanging. Yeah, exactly. And now D seven is attacked. Oh, <laughs> it's like zug zwang for him. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. What a variation. So he then went knight C five. Yeah. And yeah, now I just converted it into a winning engine. Rook takes and f7. And here there was a trap. If I take on f7 with the bishop, yeah, trying to keep all the pieces for the mating attack. Okay, maybe we can ask the viewers. Okay, okay. What should black, black do here? Defend. One idea is oh, but you are getting mated. Rook e8 is a big threat. Yeah. So. Oh, is, is rook d7 working? Rook d7 is, is a good idea, but unfortunately it doesn't because I take with the e rook, knight d7, and now bishop e6. <sighs> because this might be a winning endgame for me if you take the rooks. Or maybe draw. At least black is Yeah, fine. black doesn't have a problem. But here, bishop e6. Oh. Oh, then I have to start with knight d7. Yeah, exactly. Wow, wow. This is uh, this is like uh, interference, but in a defensive way. Yeah. Amazing. So take, 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 rook f7. Nice, nice. Mm. Okay, so here you took with the rook, takes, takes, king e8. And ah, yeah, now I'm in corner, plus I have two connected pass points on the king side, plus my bishop is superior to his name. But such positions like are never easy to convert. Do you think so? Or? Uh, yeah, it is not. No, it is not that easy. Uh, they, these positions can be easily abolished. Mm. But, but it helped that he was under time pressure. Yeah, it did. Did did was there thirty minute increment after forty moves? No, it was not. Done. Ah, so now it's you reach forty moves, but you you they he's still low on time. Yeah. Rook d4, g4, you start rolling your pawns, king g1, check, bring the king up, slowly, h4, king f6, check, king here, check. And my bishop is so strong and his knight is totally dominated. Yeah, somehow his knight looks beautiful but can't do anything. g5, f6, f6. Check. Oh my god. This you made it look so easy. It's like he got no play. Just you pushed your pawns. Beautiful. He put it take h7 and he resigned here. Because I think you are doing the same. Yeah, rook f7, g7. Next. Wow, Arjun, thank you for showing this game because I think through this game uh, we got a glimpse of your strength in actual calculations. Uh, which I always knew that you are so strong, but uh, it's always good to be reminded uh, again and again of how how difficult it is to be playing at the level that you are playing. Uh, you got a wild card in uh, Grand Chess Tour. That's a nice development, right? Yeah, that is definitely something. Yeah. And and uh, you are now going to play in Sigaman? Uh, yeah, it's um, April 26th or 27th. And yeah, Sigeman and Grandchester. Mm -hmm. Now, now if you play in any tournament, there has to be some like best players like Ding, Magnus, or 
hikaru fabi for you to not be the top seed right uh, so isigaman you will be the top seed who will be the other players no, no, no. Beck will be the top seed oh noderbeck is playing yeah wow okay and who else is there um, there is vincent there is juvenjun and swidler last year's winner ah also prag um, second now recently revealed yeah. at the uh, candidates yeah and grandelia uh, and there's also kolapo and one more player wow so it is a nice mix of um, you know elite players strong grandmasters and so on so it will be fun to follow that event and what are, what is your feeling about this new development that is taking place with regards to freestyle chess that happened in wisenhaus recently um uh, the the fact that it could become a tour maybe you also signed up for for it uh, as one of the top 25 players of the world uh, what is your feeling i got to know about the uh, grand grand slam i think it's yes. called and yeah it, just the term grand slam itself sounds so exciting and and also i think it's the first time we have like such a big tour in like all the continents covered um, because grand chess tour if i'm not wrong is missing in africa mm-hmm. or australia as well so i think they did once in africa but now they no longer have at one point they did one of their events there uh, okay but they never had anything in australia as well no this will also have that i think mm-hmm. so yeah it will be exciting and let's see how it will develop but what I, what is your feeling on uh, this sort of the essence of it which is that somewhere it is being felt by magnus that there is lot of theory and he needs some sort of different like freestyle chess where there is no theory and then you play classical chess do you also feel the same Uh, I totally get his perspective, and I I wouldn't necessarily say like freestyle is better than normal, but I wouldn't mind it either. Mm. It's not like I uh I have a preference to it, but it's also not like I have a pre- preference against it. I'm open to that. I'm very curious to see how you would fare because on one hand you are having brilliant opening prep. but on the other hand we just saw how you calculate and how complex positions you enjoy playing so it can be uh, very interesting i think you would maybe do very well in that format yeah it would be nice to see um, at them right and uh, arjun uh, have you been like looking at the candidates in general or do you follow the games or you just are completely uh, switched mm-hmm. off yeah i'm following the results and games later mm-hmm. I also saw that on Instagram you shared uh, something related to Pragna Nanda and his decision to play F five. Was it was that what you shared? Yeah, yeah, it was like I was so moved by it. It was definitely sure, and I had played with F five like long ago in twenty twenty two, but playing it at the candidates and and showing such map uh, impressive prep and also. very good follow up game it was and also especially considering that he had lost the previous game as well it was very impressive yeah yeah there was and a lot also of also vaishali she had lost the previous game as well and both of them made such a good comeback right that's amazing um is is there someone you think uh, you you are sort of not rooting for but uh, you, you would be happy if they won this event Um, it would be Pragan with it. I know them very well in person. Um, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And, and Gukesh, of course, uh, you you know all three of them very well. But I think with Prag, you have these nice walks uh, always. Yes, Pragan with it, I think I know them slightly better. Hmm. Hmm. Fantastic. And uh, Gukesh, it was an absolute pleasure. To, uh, Arjun. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I I got confused. Sorry, Arjun. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you, uh, because I started the video with Canada, uh, sorry, London, Canada, and I'm ending it with this. So maybe I need to really. But uh, Arjun, it was absolute pleasure to speak with you, uh, to get your thoughts on this um, 
rise that you've had and if there is one advice finally that you have to give to all the people out there um, with regards to because I keep on hearing this again and again and I want to get your thoughts that oh I'm I'm higher rated I cannot play in these open tournaments and so on what would be your advice to them to to such players yeah if you can like get a fighting game against low uh, against weaker opponents and you're stronger than them your rating will show at some point uh, the strength will be shown at some point and also i remember back in 2012 uh, fabi played in Reykjavik with like 1767 and yeah i think he gained some rating as well and he won the tournament so until you start getting like the invitations to the proper late tournaments, I think it's one of the best to... Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, congratulations, Arjun, once again. And you inspire us a lot through not your words, but your actions through the way you play. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.